kids are being crazy right now. I can hear them out the window. Anyway, welcome to Author Mama Reads. And uh, the book we're, I'm reviewing today is To Win Her Favor by Tamara Alexander. And I am very excited to review this book. So let's get to it. <laughs> If I have anything to complain about, and there really isn't much, it's the use of the M names. Uh, the main character's name is Margaret. Um, they occasionally call her Maggie. She has a friend named Mary. And <coughs> um, Savannah's mother is named Melna. And the father's name is, and her husband's name was Merle. And it's bugging me, <laughs> the, but that's it. That is the only thing. I haven't moved from this spot in three hours. I got here at three and it's six and the kids are hungry. So I'm he heating up water so they can make instant oatmeal or cereal because my husband is working late and it's Valentine's and I want to sit here and read. Ugh, I feel a little guilty, but not a lot guilty, just a little bit guilty. Here's another thing, another name. There's a Mr. Blake, which sounds a lot like Drake. Huh. Come on, Blake. Oh, I want to be with you. Hi! Hi! <laughs> yeah. Chapter 49. I might be crying. I am so excited. <laughs> okay. This book is about um, <coughs> Cullen and who uh, came for, over from Ireland after the potato famine and about a girl named Maggie. So the year of this book, 1869, and it takes place in Nashville, Tennessee. <clears throat> One of my best friends lives in Tennessee. We should read this together, Leah. This book, this book. I don't have a lot of words for this book, at least none that are n negative because this is what I wait for, you guys. This is what I wait for. A book that is like a diamond in the rough. Like you read a lot of books and some of them are so-so and some of them are duds and you're like, well, maybe this one's okay. Um, the last book I read, uh, The Sea Before Us. Man, that like renewed my hope in <laughs> some authors because I liked it so much. But this one, this one. Man, okay, sorry, just let's get to it. Oh goodness, this is book three. Uh, it's the Bell Mead Plantation novels. The first one is to wait to whisper her name. The second one is to win her favor. The third one is to wager her heart. And that makes sense because there was one little thing not wrapped up in here with one of her friends. So there's one more book. But honestly, you could read this as a standalone. I mean, maybe there's a couple of things that you're, um, that you maybe didn't understand for some reason, but they did such a good job um, kind of wrapping it up in and of itself that I did not know that it had a first one. I could tell it would probably have a sec another one. Um, so anyway, from the start, um, just from chapter one, I... <laughs> My kids. <laughs> um, I, I, was, I was pulled in. It started off with Colin, and I just... I liked him. I liked him from square one. The overarching theme of this book is, or one of the overarching themes is prejudice. And, but not really against um, African Americans, it's, it's against the Irish. And in fact, they used to call them white N-words. Um, speaking of the N-word, she does use the N-word. She uses it more than once. But she, reading, using it in context, it's her characters of the time that are using the word. So it's like one of those things where you like read it and you're like, oh, I don't like that word. Oh, stop it. <laughs> but at the same time, you're like, well, okay, that, that is what that character would say and that is of the time. And it's not used so much that you're constantly like hit over the head with it. So, but I'm just warning you it's in there. I did not get caught up into Maggie's character quite as fast, but I think that simply because there was a book one that I did not know about that um, that probably hashed her out a little bit more. Maybe she was in that book because there's like a, about three friends. So I think it's about these three girls. But I still liked her very much. And 
she lives with her father. Her, her mother's gone. Her brothers are gone, having died in the, the Civil War. And even the father, with as little as was said about him right up front, um, he has a scene with Colin. And I just, I, I just liked it. <laughs> I just liked it. And I knew at that scene what was going to happen. So as far as predictability goes, but I was, I mean, it was there, but I was excited. I was like, oh, this is going to happen. He's going to ask this and he's going to do this because he needs this and he can offer this and then this is going to have to happen. And then we're going to get to like see how that pans out. I love stories where they sort of get thrown together and then their love has to build and there's a lot of tension. So, what? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you want to sit with me? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, he's trying to poke me right on the hand. You can tell him stop, okay? Okay. No, I did. Okay, problem solved. Speaking of tension. Okay, mom. <laughs> sexual tension within a relationship. I, I did read some reviews that were not happy with that. Ooh. In fact, a little scathing on, on the side of that, how can this call itself a Christian book? And it says, if you have see, read her books, well, this one read no differently than a Harlequin, Harlequin romance. Too much yeah. time focused on I'm wanting right. sex, having sex, and imagining sex. No, no, it was not that bad. And I'm sorry, madam, you've never read a Harlequin romance. And I've only done it once. I've only read one once. I was probably 16 years old and my friend got her aunt's book, sat me down on her bed and said, read this and I want to watch you while you read it. <laughs> so I read this page and I like my face turned red probably and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? No, 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 no. She's never read a Harlequin romance if, if she thinks this is like that. So no, okay. um, I will say that she did kind of toe the line though because for a Christian book, Tension, sexual tension, that's fine. She did get a little descriptive. I was a little surprised myself. So no. I, won't, I won't lie about it. It wasn't enough to keep me no, from No, I but... love you. <laughs> I love you too. <coughs> he caressed her shoulders. Then, knowing only too well the number of buttons on her shirt waist, he loosened them one at a time. Yeah. And as each slipped free, her kiss grew more firm. Yeah. He slipped his hand inside her shirt waist. And she sucked in a breath. Um, it doesn't go a lot farther than that. There's another part where it says that he unbuttoned her shirt and kissed her. It didn't name body parts, but you know where he was kissing her. Um, I don't normally read Christian fiction that talks about hands going under clothes or in places. Um, I mean, I read Francine Rivers, and I think she toes the line a little bit too, especially like with redeeming love and things like that. But I think. With these books, you can easily skip over it. I mean, if you really want to, you can skip over it. But I think that's that's a hard issue. I'm trying to if you make a big shadow. Everyone everywhere is telling me just Mom, go find somewhere else. Make a... I think that you do need to examine your heart. If if this is something that bothers you, then you you should skip it, or you should read something as a little lighter. You know, especially if you're not married or something like that. You don't have an outlet <laughs> to go to your husband. <laughs> go, oh, I read this. No. Okay, never mind. But as for the story, I loved it. Oh, and the end made me cry. Oh, oh my gosh. They, she did it. She built you up to a crescendo, and you're like, oh. <laughs> so, good, good on her. Obviously, she puts a lot of research into her books. Um, in fact, she has a YouTube video where she goes to Bell Me I think it's Bellmead, Bellmead Plantation, unless it was for another series. So I think Bellmead Plantation actually exists and she sort of walks her readers through it unless it was, I'm getting the name wrong and it was a different plantation from a different series. But, um, so she has a lot of research, but I think that's one of the reasons why I really like her. And I also really liked Sarah Sundin and it, cause it looked like they only wrote about one book a year, possibly two. But I, I just wonder, my own little theory, is that they put enough work into their books to make it good. They're not just like shooting out book after book with ideas that are only mediocre. My theory is that one book a year 
gives you a better book but I don't I don't know that's that's just me you can find Tamara Alexander on TamaraAlexander.com she's on Facebook I sus suspect she's on Instagram or Twitter I did not check either of those she does have oh she has some trailers for her books on YouTube um, through Bethany house they're actually pretty interesting trailers uh, I made trailers for my first two books before I knew that trailers were a thing um, so I really enjoyed seeing what um, a publishing company put out for their trailers if I figure out how I'll put mine in the description so you can <laughs> don't laugh at them just check them out um, and I'll put hers too. If you are an author and you want to know what you can take away from a book like like Tamara Alexander, one great dialogue. She had so many accents going on. First of all, she had an Irish accent. She had the Southern Tennessee accent. She had the African American, um, like the sleeve accent. She had I feel like there was one other accent that came into play and I could hear them all in my head. Like, in fact, I started reading out loud. I started reading it under like under my breath whispering just so that I could hear them spoken um, because it was so fun to have all these like competing accents. So that was really fun. Um, so good dialogue, not really any fluff to speak of. And then, um, I would dissect her, her, and I did this. I just, I took her paragraph and I just pulled it apart. How many tags did she use? Like, you know, I went to the store, Mary said, Mary said would be the tag. Um, how many times did she use tags? How many times did she not use tags? How many adverbs did she use in her writing? Did she use very many? Um, did she do more show and not tell? Like I dissected her sentences because I felt like on more than one occasion, I would just read something and go, ooh, I like the way that sounded. Or ooh, that, that was, oh, she just stole my glasses. Hey, bring those back right now. Thank you. I think this is exceptional writing. So I would definitely recommend her. I will be reading any of her other books. Um, I have a lot of other books I wanna read, but she is one of my new go-tos. Um, the next book that I'm going to be reading is Heart on the Line by Karen Wittemeyer. Um, I've read Karen's books um, before. I have not read this one and I've been wanting to. So um, <clears throat> it has a title similar uh, Love on the Line and it kept getting me confused because I'd read Love on the Line by um, Deanne Gist which I loved, 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 loved. Um, had a lot of twists in it, uh, for at least to me. So, Heart on the Line. That one's next. It's been the other one I've wanted to read.